Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. Value up, down, or the same? Same. I kept it as the same, but he was not a top 12 quarterback to begin with. If he's if he's healthy and takes the first snap in training camp, he might be 12 for me. Uh, same as what, though? Same as what he was a week yeah. ago? Or, yeah. Same as the this perception, morning. not the same as how he finished. Okay. Not as good as it would have been if you were on Minnesota, right? Correct. Correct. Um, no, I mean, I think it's the same. Think so? Yeah. I mean, he's stepping into a situation with a similar play caller, coming mm-hmm. from the same tree, from Sean McVay's tree. He's stepping into great weapons around him, uh, obviously unproven in Atlanta by comparison to Minnesota, but I think an easier division to play in. And the uh, the potential to still continue to put up good numbers. Easier exactly. division I can buy into. Receiving core being even close to the same, I cannot buy into that. He had an awesome group in Minnesota. Yeah, I think he's going to have an awesome group in, in Atlanta because of I what he's going to be. a good them. group. I don't think it'll be. It's nothing like what he had in Minnesota. Well, from a pedigree standpoint, it's better. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. That's true. From, uh, from the uh, eyeball test and from what we've seen from these players over yeah, the Yeah, but you're talking about an eyeball test of, 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 of those guys playing with crappy quarterbacks. Let's see what those guys look like with Jaron Hall starting 17 games. Yeah, sure. It's a fair point. Well, all right. But no matter how good Drake London is, he's not Justin Jefferson. He won't be Justin Jefferson, but he was expected to be better than Justin Jefferson based on how he was drafted. Uh, (laughs) He was drafted higher. When he was drafted, I don't think he was expected to be better than what Justin Jefferson had already become. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, also, you know, they're not going to throw as much as the Vikings because basically nobody does. But, you know, I feel like caught up in the euphoria of the Falcons finally getting a quarterback and Cousins getting almost 100 million guaranteed. I saw 100, then I saw 90, but four years, big deal. He's 36 years old coming off a torn Achilles. Are we are we sort of overlooking it? Or he'll be 36 in August. I don't know what the Achilles injury means for a quarterback. I mean, we don't really know. No, they, they can usually forward. come back from that injury. It's it's not like Kirk Cousins is known for his rushing or explosiveness. I know. He'll be, he'll be, as long as he recovers in time, he'll be fine. But this deal was great for his bank account. I don't know if it's as good for Oh, he was getting paid no matter where he was going. Yeah, I know. Hundred million guaranteed, four more years in the league. It just it feels it feels like Minnesota is stuck right now. Like if if I'm the Vikings, like I'm trying anything possible to move up in the draft from eleven. Oh yeah. So Sam Darnold going to the Vikings. All right, Jamie, what's your take on this whole sitch? The sitch. Um, I hope uh, at eleven they draft a quarterback. You know, if not, move up to draft a quarterback. Uh, this is um, you know somewhat uninspiring, clearly uh, from what. They have from a weapon standpoint, you know, to, you know, feels like they're settling. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I would hope that they offered Kirk Cousins a, a hefty deal and he just wanted to be in Atlanta because that's where his wife is from. But in any event, um, look, Darnold, Jaron Hall, Nick Mullins, um, you know, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Adam, you, you, you sent me some stats about what uh, Thomas and I have some stats about what Nick Mullins was on pace for. Uh, you know, so it's a it's a great offense, a great system. You know, if Nick Mullins could, you know, potentially be a five thousand yard passer, that tells you that you know they they're going to get great production from hopefully whoever's back there. But you know, I think for uh, for the long term, you know, for anybody who's got Justin Jefferson in Dynasty or Jordan Addison in Dynasty, and and for the short term for those guys as well, you'd like to see you know hopefully an upgrade about over what Darnold or Nick Mullins has been in their uh, in their career so far. So you know, we're we're probably looking at if they stay at eleven. You know, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, you know, at McCarthy probably is is, is going to price himself out of that based on how the, the rumor circles are going. Uh, but those will be the three quarterbacks in the mix. Is that an upgrade over the guys that they have? We'll find out. But um, obviously, Justin Jefferson proved he can play with a lot of different quarterbacks last season. And hopefully that'll be the case moving forward. Dave, the last time that, in my opinion, that the number one wide receiver in PPR, number one overall finisher, had a bad quarterback. I would say it's DeAndre Hopkins in 2017, which was a little bit of Deshaun Watson. And uh, I think Tom Savage was the other guy. So it's usually a good quarterback, including Cousins. You know, it doesn't be an amazing quarterback. Um, but, you know, look, I, I, I'm I, doing this like on the fly. So I don't know if guys have finished two or three. With, like, like Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think, were Chris Godwin's quarterback when he was the number two wide receiver that one year behind Michael Thomas. Um, but, You're yeah. You're th- wide receivers that had a ton of volume. Oh, yeah. Well, well he's so going to get a ton gotta of be, That has to be the starting point is that the Vikings stay true to 
their pass heavy nature. And I don't know if we can count on that because they were not that way when Dobbs was in there. And I think that was smart for them to do because Josh Dobbs isn't. Jefferson was also hurt for most of that. Jefferson was hurt. That's fair. Toward the end of the season, when Jefferson came back, they did start to throw a little bit more quarterbacks be damned. Not that the results were particularly good for them. Um, I, I want to see them get a rookie quarterback. I don't know anything about JJ McCarthy yet. Um, but like if, if they somehow trade up and they get one of the top three prospects, I'll be pretty happy if it's McCarthy or Penix. I don't know if I'll be as happy for now. And, and this is kind of just going off the conversation we had yesterday. If we're, we're, we're going to say in Atlanta that the targets are going to be much better for Drake London and Kyle Pitts, and that's why we're moving them up our rankings. Well, the targets probably aren't going to be better or the same for Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison moving forward. And I don't think it's going to be Sam Darnold. If it is, it'll be for a few weeks, and then they'll get him out of there, and they'll start somebody else. But I'm nervous. I know that Justin Jefferson's an amazing wide receiver, but it, it takes two to be great at wide receiver. And if you don't have a good quarterback who's not going to throw into tight windows, not going to take chances with the football, uh, you can have 10 targets a game and still catch only four passes. So when I say I'm nervous, I'm not dropping him into round two. He's still going to be a round one pick, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to let somebody else take Justin Jefferson at this point. Mm. Well, he can't be any lower than wide receiver four, though, right? I'll gladly take Justin Jefferson. Thank you. you can, I, I'll take I'll take Lamb Hill and St. Brown ahead of Justin Jefferson in PPR. And, and Jamar Chase? Not there yet with Chase. Ooh. Let's see what happens with Higgins. Boy, okay. I'm, I just put up a poll, uh, an X poll. And Sam Darnold to the Vikings. In fantasy drafts, Justin Jefferson is blank. Wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, or wide receiver four. So I have a tendency to talk about these polls and then never get back to them. So just keep <laughs> reminding me. I always do that. Right now, only 32 votes, and it's it's actually pretty close between all of them. But wide receiver four does have the most votes, just barely. But that that's going to change. So we'll keep an eye on that. We haven't really talked. I mean, I keep talking about Jefferson the last couple of days. I never talk about Addison. So... Yeah, what what do you think? And also, I, just for fun, I, I Jamie teased what I said about Nick Mullins. The last four games of the season, Nick Mullins came in at halftime of one of them. He started three of them, and he came in in the third quarter of one of them. So three and a half games. He was on pace for 5,198 yards, 30 <laughs> touchdowns, and 34 interceptions. It was incredible. He averaged 33.8 pass attempts. Hi, Jameis. Yeah, right. He's Jameis Winston. But 9.06. What have they got, Jameis Winston? Attempt. Like, that's insane. He had the, Basically, only Brock Purdy was better than that per attempt. So he was just slinging it. Uh, but it, but it yeah, was unsustainable. Was. And, the, and he turned the ball over so many times. Um, eight interceptions in those four games. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Jamie, your thoughts on Addison and, I guess, Hawkinson? I'm, I'm most likely out on Hawkinson based on injury and, and quarterback concerns right now. So he's not somebody that I'm going to be very, uh, very fond of in any event. Um, uh, <laughs> he's got a funny message. Um, uh, Addison is, I, I think you just got to treat him as a, a number three fantasy receiver at this point, you know, so he's, he's I think first off all these guys, you know, especially if people feel the way Dave does about Jefferson, all these guys are buys in dynasty then. You know, because if they do draft a quarterback, you know, you have a, a window right now to go get some potential great value. If you're if somebody's selling Jefferson at, at cost or, or certainly giving up on Jordan Addison right now. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I love the idea of, um, you know, trying to do that now. But in any event, I think I think Addison's look, he's going to be a number three fantasy receiver no matter what. Um, he's going to benefit from a lot of single coverage. He's going to, I think, take a year to, you know, leap. He was doing some good things with Jefferson. He did a few great things without Jefferson when Cousins was still healthy. But it's kind of a little bit of an incomplete right now because we don't know what he'll look like. We don't know really what this whole offense will look like when everybody's healthy because, you know, you had Jefferson missing time. You had Cousins missing time. You had Hawkinson missing time. You know, to see that all the, all, the whole puzzle put together, uh, we probably won't see that probably, I would guess, until October at the earliest, depending on who the quarterback is and when Hawkinson's back. Okay, would you draft Jordan Addison or Jackson Smith and Jigba right now? Addison. I believe I have Addison higher. I mean, it, it, I, we we don't know when Hawkinson's coming back. You're talking about the second option in a high volume passing attack. I don't think that whoever the quarterback is, based on who's on their roster right now, including Jaron Hall, they're not going to alter what they do. They're going to throw the ball a ton, and so the volume is going to be much more in Addison's favor based on him being the second player in this passing attack as opposed to JSN, who could be third. 
Yeah. See, I, he was pretty bad though down the stretch, wasn't he? Eh, he was okay. In four game, in those four games I mentioned with Mullins, Addison had twenty nine point one points, huge game at Cincinnati, one point two points, five point eight points, and fifteen point seven points. He averaged about seven, about six, seven targets a game. His best games were without Jefferson. Makes perfect sense, and he was still good, plenty with Jefferson on the field. But man, when he was the number one receiver, he acted like it, and he showed out. Mm, but he wasn't. He wasn't really. He he was almost never the number one receiver with yeah, Cousins. It was, it was well with Cousins. They were they were yeah, games. two games, and yes, he was awesome uh, with Cousins and no Jefferson. But yeah, he showed what he could do.